Chapter 27, David. At 7.57 a.m. on Wednesday morning, I cross paths with Kit just as we make our way to sc into school. She smiles at me and makes the take off your headphones motion, which I do. I leave my music on and we talk while walking. I'm pretty sure I can still round the corner to a track chains. Your face looks better, she says, wincing. Does it hurt? Not too bad. My right eye is ringed in blue and my lips are swollen, but my nose has returned to roughly normal di dimensions. In the shower, I noticed even small bruises along my torso, and I'm pretty sure I'll lose my left thumbnail. Meat Boy apparently has two casts. He will have to sit out for the rest of the football season. I'm not complaining. I have not received a single threatening text since yesterday. For the time being, my peers are okay with me continuing to live. So there's this party on Friday night, Kit says. There are probably lots of parties on Friday night, I say. A line which sounded much more smoother in my head than aloud. Well, this particular one is a Mapleview High School party at Dylan's. Boy Dylan or girl Dylan? <laughs> oh, man. Kit smiles. Oh, look at that. I forgot to change the title. I am not the smartest. Kit smiles to herself, though I have no idea why she find that amusing. Girl Dylan. Right. I believe Girl Dylan has red hair that starts out small and fans out across her back. It's spectacularly geometric. The one with the orange triangular head, I guess, Kit says. So I'm wondering, do you want to go with you to a Maple View High School party? Yes, with me, to the party. Though now I'm starting to regret asking, because you're making this so much harder and more awkward than I thought it'd be. I'd love to go to Girls Dylan party, Girl Dylan's party with you. I say, quickly accepting before Kit can resign her invitation. If I didn't know it was inappropriate, I'd do a little dance right here. I suddenly understand the appropriate usage of my niece. Can I get a woot woot? Because I want two of them. A woot, and then another woot. Whatever that may be, I'd maybe even add in some lasso arms. Okay, Kit says. Okay, I say, and try but fail to keep my face neutral. Nope, I smile so big it hurts my lips. I slip my headphones back on. Round the corner at the track change number three. A good start to the day. I'm at the mall again, shopping for Friday night. Miney has declared this journey a necessity, though I don't understand why I can't just wear one of the outfits we bought last week. I've been rotating my new clothes on a mutually agreed upon schedule with my mother that allows maximum repeatability to buy me, but also makes time for bi-weekly washing. The thought of adjusting to more new clothes makes my body itch. Will it be noisy at the party? I ask Viney, since she's a serious party goer and is therefore an expert. I say this loudly because it happens to be noisy here too, as we pass the food court, my least favorite part of the mall experience. Too many mixed culinary smells and crying children and people pushing past while carrying an unwieldy number of shopping bags. Yep, distractingly so, I ask. For you, yeah, probably. But you definitely can't bring your headphones. Will it be smelly? Will there be lots of people throwing up in almost every teen movie party scene? The heroine drinks too much and vomits on our potential love interest's lap. I like Kit a lot but maybe not that much. You know, when I saw heroin, I thought he was talking about the drug, not not the female version of hero, I'm gonna be honest. Oh, it, nah, I mean, that happens sometimes, usually later in the night, but you'll be fine. So put a number on it. What do you think is the likelihood of someone vomiting on or near me at Friday night's party? I ask as we move into the atrium part of the mall, which has a high glass dome ceiling and a grand piano. It's the opposite of the food court. It's open, empty and open, and the only part of this whole place that I don't hate. The music isn't half bad. I mean, there's a reason the pianist is playing in front of Nordstrom, Strom, Nordstrom and not at Carnegie Hall, but it's a tolerable, tolerable soundtrack. 2.4%. Money asks, answers with uncharacteristic precision. 
I do not ask her how she arrived at that number, but estimating that she's been to at least one party a weekend for half a decade, that means she's been proximate to throw up about six times. Those are reasonable odds. Little D, you'll be fine. What if the football team is there? They will likely hide from you since you are, like, the UI, the ultimate fighting championship now. In UFC, they don't abide by rules. I abide by rules. I fight with honor. Right. Can you please also give me instructions for dancing? Excuse me? I need instructions for dancing. This is like the Rain Man. Except not at all like the Rain Man. Except the dancing scene in Rain Man and sort of like that. Maybe the kissing part will also be like the Rain Man. Who knows? Uh, well, first of all, this is not the sort of music that we'll be playing. She motions to the pianist, who is bald and bearded. Which I've always found to be bizarre combination. You would think you want to have cranial and mandibular hair consistency. No, Ravel's Bolero. Got it. No classical music, period. He'll probably just play all the crap that's on the radio. I amend my original request. I need instructions for dancing to noise. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, man. Uh, do you get it? Because pop music sucks, guys. <laughs> Ugh. You just move your body to the beat. Feel the music. Marnie puts her arms up and sways to the sounds I do not hear. She closes her eyes, leans to the tips of her toes, and jumps. After approximately 90 seconds, she stops and looks at me. Your turn. I don't think so. <laughs> Except the Rain Man has good writing. <laughs> Fine. I copy her. Jump up and down. Though I don't actually jump up d down. That was a misnomer. I let gravity do its job. My sneakers make disc discordant squeaks along the marble floor. No, stop. You look like you're having a seizure. Uh, thinking of dancing like having a conversation, but with the music instead of with another person. It's all intuition and instinct. Right, because I'm good at all three of those things. Intuition, instinct, and having conversations with other people. Little D, sarcasm becomes you. Seriously, though, you got this. Just like when you're talking to Kit. Follow her lead. Look for the cues. If the song is fast, you move faster. If it's slow, you move slower more intimately. Maybe for you it won't be about instinct. Then what will it be about, I ask? Well, you're good at details, right? Noticing the small things, and you know how to listen. Like really, listen in a way no one else can. So maybe use those skills. Do it your way. You're not making sense. Dance my way? I don't have a way. You do. Everybody does. We have reached the center of the atrium, and the sun is glaring down. It's too hot in here. Ravel smells like an aggressive choice for the mall. I think through the numbers, applying values to a cost-benefit analysis of the change chances of my humiliating myself if I decide to dance at the party, the math feels uncomfortably uncom random, like I've assigned numbers just to make myself feel better. And this could be your chance. Say you're dancing with Kit. Maybe you lean in a little and BAM! You guys kiss! <clears throat> do you think this is my choice? Is Do you think this is my once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to kiss Kit Lowell? And if so, what do you think are my chances in that regard, I ask? Yes, and I think your chances are about 2.4%. So are you saying that on Friday night I have an equal chance of getting vomited on as I do of getting kissed? Welcome to high school, Miney says. Ah, oh, Miney, what a clip. Oh, man, I love you, Miney. Ah, <laughs> ha, 